بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أمر بعجاء تنسي أزمان هاشم برو تانسلر أوبن يونيفرسي ملايزيا يا أمر بعجاء بروفيسور إميريتس تنسي أنو علي بريسيدن فايس تانسلر أوبن يونيفرسي ملايزيا إن كوان سري يا أمر بعجاء بروفيسور دكتور مانسو فازيل سينيا فايس بريسيدن كم Chairman of the Working Committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to say thank you to the Open University Malaysia for this invitation to address this gathering on its 10th anniversary and also to launch the project just now. Uh, I've listened very carefully to what the uh, Professor Tansi Anwar was saying just now, and I find that uh, the things that I thought I would uh, suggest you should do have already been done. <laughs> That takes the wind from my sails. <laughs> so I will try my best to speak about this subject, about the impact of technology on the future of higher education. Now, technology has always played a great part in education. Perhaps uh, the first innovation was uh, the uh, invention of writing of alphabets and writing so that uh, people can communicate knowledge to another person without having to speak to that person. That was a great leap forward. But even greater is the uh, contribution made by the invention of the printing press. That has enabled even more knowledge to be transferred from one person, perhaps, to hundreds and thousands of people, even millions of people. So these uh, technologies obviously have contributed much towards education in general and certainly towards higher education. What these inventions did was to enable knowledge to be passed on almost seamlessly, so that more and more people can gain knowledge, can gain the knowledge that is useful and available for them. Uh, in the past, of course, uh, knowledge was uh, regarded as the, uh, the um, right of only a few, uh, the priests in the temples and churches and in the mosques, Ten, tended to keep the knowledge to themselves. But today we have realized that knowledge must be spread as quickly as possible so that all can benefit from knowledge. And any contribution towards speeding up this, the, uh, the process of uh, giving knowledge to people would be something that would be welcome by any society. We now live in what we call the knowledge age. There is so much knowledge available to us that sometimes we become a little bit confused. And some people, of course, realize, realizing this, decided to make the access to knowledge much more easy. Hence, uh, the systems invented by Microsoft Yahoo uh, and, uh, and the others. These were search, search engines to enable us to access knowledge much more quickly. Otherwise, we would have to type in a lot of uh, requests before we can get access to the knowledge that is available through the so-called uh, information superhighway the internet. Uh, people who invent, invented this 
have also contributed much towards the, the availability of knowledge to very many people. Millions and millions of people make use of uh, these uh, search engines so that they can gain access to knowledge very quickly. As for knowledge itself, the availability of this knowledge is almost unlimited. And the problem that arises, of course, is how to make use of this knowledge, sorting out the knowledge so that we can make use of the knowledge that is necessary for our purpose. And here the search engines have played a big role. But there is still scope, still room for making use of this massive amount of information, provided we can develop systems which would enable the information to be accessed much more quickly and more effectively. One of the things that we, um, which was mentioned by Professor just now, was that uh, the need to learn English. Uh, because we have to accept the fact that English is now the language of knowledge. Yes, there are, there's knowledge coming to us in French, in German, and in uh, other languages like Japanese. But uh, mainly the language of knowledge today is English. And because English is so important, there have been a lot of efforts put in to try and make the learning of, of English much easier. Uh, very many systems have been developed uh, in which you can actually interact, verbally interact with your computer. You can, the computer can ask you a question and you can answer and if your answer is right, your pronunciation is right, then the computer will acknowledge that you are right. Otherwise, the computer will, uh, well, allow you to have another try. So now the computer has become almost human. And the computer has more knowledge than human beings. So we have this powerful, powerful uh, uh, source of knowledge which we have to learn how to make use of. And the people who come up with ideas about how to gain access to the, this knowledge and learn from this knowledge, these are the people who succeed. Of course, we know people like Bill Gates and, uh, and the matter of Apple, for example. Uh, they make tons of money. But I hope you don't think about making tons of money alone. Uh, I'm, I hear Bill Gates is donating half his earnings to charity, which is a good thing. He cannot finish all that $70 billion <laughs> in his lifetime or even in his children's lifetime. It's better to give away to the people who actually made him rich. So there is an opportunity here to continuously think about how to make use of the information that is so easily available in, in the computer. And of course, many people have come up with all kinds of ideas, and this has contributed towards the spread of knowledge. Uh, I'm a blogger, as you all know. <laughs> uh, in my days, there were no blogs, thank God. <laughs> We had to rely on newspapers and newspapers and the other media, whether electronic or print, they can carry only so much information. But every day there are lots of information.